Here with us today is Natalie Barden, who, as you know, is one of thousands of Americans that have lost a loved one due to gun violence. Here's her story. My name is Natalie Barden. December will mark 10 years since my seven-year-old brother Daniel was killed in his first grade classroom at Sandy Hook Elementary School, along with 19 students and six educators. Daniel was a ray of sunshine, and there's not a day that goes by that I don't miss him. Losing him was the hardest thing that has ever happened to me. I feel a sense of urgency to prioritize this issue, as the United States has suffered over 4,000 mass shootings since the one that took my brother's life. I choose to speak up about the devastating, lifelong impacts of gun violence, with the hope that no one else has to experience the loss of a loved one in such a senseless act. Hello, Mr. President. First of all, thank you so much for being here today and for speaking with us. Um, as you know, my brother Daniel was murdered with an AR-15, which is one of the most commonly used weapons in mass shootings. You have talked a lot about wanting to ban weapons of war. Um, how and more, most importantly, when do you plan on achieving that? Let me say in full disclosure, I spent a lot of time in the school that this all happened. I met for, with every single parent who lost someone, and I become friends with her dad, so full disclosure. And I remember her when she was about as big as you saw in the film with her brother. And um, it was a, uh, a circumstance that uh, was, I visit every mass shooting site that has occurred in a number of years, going all the way back to your school. And one of the things that I saw was that, actually three things. One, you know, I did get the law changed of, of, of banning assault weapons back in the, in the, in 92 or three. And, uh, but I had, could only do it for an X number of years. I had to come up for reconsideration. And when it came up for reconsideration in the Bush administration, they did not let it, they let it go. They wouldn't support it. And uh, I've been trying to get it changed since then. But here's the deal. One of the things that occurs, there's two things I think what happened in your school. One was that that was the mom who had all those weapons, his mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had access to them. Right now, folks, if... I left, if I, we were at a, this were not at the White House, we were at a, at a restaurant. And I left the keys in my automobile. And some underage kid came out, stole the automobile, was driving to kill someone. I'd be liable. I'd be civilly liable because I was irresponsible leaving the keys in the car. I think anyone who owns weapons, any weapon, should have to lock them up. If they're legal weapons, lock them up. I have, I haven't shot them in a long time, but I have two shotguns. My deceased son had a shotgun, which is a target practice. But the fact of the matter is they're locked in the case. So no one should be able to access those, number one. No, I don't, I don't think that the AR, the, these assault weapons are just that. They're made for one reason, to kill people. As when I was trying to get it passed the first time and got it passed, Hunters in Delaware would say, well, I want, I said, how many deer wearing Kevlar vest? How many folk, how many folks out there are there? What purpose is to have a gun that can, a bullet can travel five times the speed of an ordinary bullet? So what we did was this time around, we finally in first time in 30 years got gun legislation passed. And the House of Representatives, at my encouragement and their own, passed the assault weapons ban. But the Republicans in the Senate blocked it. I, we only have 50 votes. We have to get every single Democrat. And we were not able to get it done. And, but I promise you, I promise you, that this next term, this next two years, I'm going to do everything in my power. The American people support doing away with those weapons. And honey, I shouldn't say honey. I remember when you were little. But, you know, you know the tragedy that occurred. And what maybe you don't know is, folks, after what happened at her school, the state police asked to meet with me. State police who were doing the investigation. And there were about 15 of them, and we went in a, in a room. And some of them started crying. 
and they said, we need help. They were talking about they needed mental help. What they saw, this carnage that this, this young man inflicted on that whole school and on the teachers as well. And so it's just, I find no rational reason why assault weapons should be able to be sold, period. And I promise I'm going to do it. I'm going to go right at it again when, we go, when they get back in session. Thank you. But your voice matters, by the way. I, I genuinely mean it. I really do think that um, a ban on assault weapons should be made a priority because, as you said, they're weapons of war that are not made to kill animals. They're made to kill people. So. And I promise you, I made it a priority from the beginning. But you got to vote. Vote, 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 vote. We need a couple more. Democrats in the Senate. Um, and as you mentioned, the legislation that was passed recently this past summer, um, that was very meaningful as it was the first bipartisan piece of legislation in 30 years. However, um, it did not address a limit on high capacity magazines or it took a small step for background checks. So what pathway has your administration identified that will close that gap so that we are more protected from individuals that want to use guns to harm us? I'm not being facetious when I say this. People voting, showing up to vote. For example, the idea that you could sell, my, my, my legislation says there can be no more than eight bullets in a round, okay? What these guys do in these mass killings, they have, they have magazines, they call them, as I know you know, that can hold up to 100 bullets in it. 100 bullets. That's where these, I mean, people just, it's like having a, automatic weapon, which is we're not allowed to have, by the way, supposedly. And, uh, and so it limits the size of the magazines. It limits the ability of any, any weapon, any weapon, including pistols. And it limits the use of the sale of an assault weapon, period, across the board. So it's, it does both. And uh, there's just, and by the way, for every mass shooting that you read about, like it happened at her school, for every single one of those, there's a mass shooting taking place every day in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood. You know, you got 4,000 of these things. But I mean, and they never get mentioned. People walk into a school, but in tough neighborhoods, there's mass shootings every single day. Every single day. And it's wrong. It's just simply wrong. 